So uh, welcome, welcome everyone, welcome Ali Reza. Today we have a webinar on, um, so presented by Ali Reza Malimir, he's a professor from uh, Popular Geophysics at Uppsala uh, University in Sweden. He's a co principal uh, of the award winning smart exploration project and a co principal of future European South, South African tech uh, type mineral exploration collaborative project. He has led several research industry works in various continents and is known for his hard rock uh, seismic expertise and innovative hardware on how to uh, solutions he has co-authored uh, 130 plus uh, peer-reviewed uh, journal publications and is incoming editor-in-chief of geophysical prospecting he's an active member of eg and ecg occasionally uh, Alreza acts as a consultant through his nordic geophysics startup company for utilizing innovative seismic imaging solutions for societal applications. So today's um, webinar uh, is on uh, innovating a new way of acquiring land seismic data for CCUS applications. And Uppsala University has pioneer pioneered a new way of acquiring reflection seismic data using a dual element acquisition setup for geological storage of CO2 in Denmark. The setup comprises shortly spaced seismic land stream unit two meters apart, which are digital sensors and an nodal array setup connected to geophones with 10 meter spacing, providing long offsets for deeper imaging purposes. This novel setup uh, replicates what uh, offshore seismic industry would em employ for detailed near surface and deep exploration user using short and long marine uh, land streamer setups. So with this, uh, I would like to give a thing to Ariza and um, start the webinar. Just a reminder to the audience, please put your questions in the Q&A box. At the end of the webinar, we will open up for questions and uh, we'll unmute you and you would be, you will have a chance to ask questions directly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Amin. I, I assume my voice is clear. Please, and, uh, yes, yeah. So thank you, Amin and Larry for um, the good. introduction. Uh, I assume all good, so I can keep going. So, um, yes, uh, uh, good afternoon from my side uh, in, in Sweden. Good morning and uh, maybe good evening to some of you attending. I'm really happy to see so many people sign up for this talk. And I will be talking about uh, uh, the, uh, quite a number of uh, surveys, and, and including a pilot study that we, we conducted in, in the frame of this project in Denmark with, with our team from Uppsala University many postdocs, many PhD students, and, uh, and also a technician, uh, and the science team from the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, uh, where I have named the key key elements. And of course, there are more people behind the scene that um, uh, I apologize if I have not mentioned them. So let's keep going. Um, uh, so I hope you would stay with me. So the, the, the talk is about innovation for CCS, and you could, you could ask question, why we talk about innovation. So if uh, if you remember, uh, at least in Europe, not long time ago, CCS had public acceptance problem. And 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 we need to be very careful that the subsurface needs to be, you know, it characterized in, in great level of detail and resolution to make sure that uh, the first, the, the storage is done safely, but also, you know, as a consequence uh, that we, we track the public acceptance. And this is of, obviously it's important for the climate goal and, and carbon neutrality. So the current solutions uh, that are focusing for a CCSI characterization, they're usually uh, targeting the, the reservoir depth level plus 800 uh, meter where you are in a supercritical um, uh, phase. And near surface studies are either done separately or, or not optimized. Uh, and and uh, if it's optimized, the cost would be very high. And there is, of course, a need uh, to develop acquisition solutions. Uh, you can also put the processing into it for a full depth imaging. Uh, and and, and I, we thought there was a space for doing this. And that's why we went towards what I will be showing you soon. So, and on the corner of this, there's COP of course, in Dubai, and, and I think there's a lot of discussion on CCS, and CCS currently is one of the only viable and reachable solution for carbon neutrality. Uh, um, so you need, for CCS or carbon capture storage, uh, you need 
these two essentials. Uh, number one is you need to have a reservoir that is closed. That means it's it's it is not open in, in laterally. It has four side closures. Like domal structures are usually the best uh, uh, because you you ensure that the the, the the CO2 would stay long term. And obviously, you don't have any faults that are leaking, uh, uh, that would be leaking uh, uh, CO2 to the surface. So you really need to make sure that the integrity is reservoir, it's, 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 it's there. And if there are any faults, they're not, um, make sure that uh, either they're sealed or, uh, um, or, and they do not make it to the surface, obviously. So uh, just in terms of carbon um, CCS readiness, uh, this site provides information about countries that are uh, head in CCS and no wonder Norway, Canada and, and US and Australia partly they're pretty ahead. And the reason if you go there, uh, Denmark where I would be showing cases um, is 56 from last year. I think this will go up because of number of uh, data that has um, um, that have become available from Denmark. So. What comes for CCS readiness is, is a suitable geology and basic subsurface data. So the more of this information available, then your, your CCS readiness um, uh, will go up. And you, of course, need to have a reservoir. And most of these reservoirs are saline uh, aquifer. Um, so the background to what I will be showing is back in 2013, I got a funding to develop two uh, instruments. One was a, a multi-component digital-based seismic land streamer, which was specifically designed for urban applications. So idea or idea then was to develop something that in, in, in big cities, we can collect uh, uh, seismic data. Uh, a multi-component, obviously, because we wanted to characterize the, the bedrock and, and the soil in, in, uh, in these 3C uh, components, but also digital so that we will not be picking up electromagnetic and electric noise that are very, very frequently seen in, in cities. At the same time, we also had another uh, system which was developed and it's off from this talk. It's a boat to radio magnetic or RMT system. And both of this uh, uh, system have been published in back in 2015 geophysics. So the focus would be on this stream and how it evolved. And I want to show this, how we, we managed to actually um, uh, make this work for CCS applications. And the background to this, uh, back in 2015, we were asked to run a PhD school uh, in, in Copenhagen together with the University of Copenhagen. So uh, we got funding to run and run this, this PhD schools together with PhD students of Uppsala University of Copenhagen. We thought it would be good to collect some data and look at the data together and work it out during this week. So we brought our, our, our land streamer there at that Time. We didn't have so many segments. I think we had only six, uh, 60 units or three segments. This, 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 this streamer that we have is segmented. So in every segment currently we have 20 units, 23 C units. So three segments would then give you a 60 units. And if it's two meter apart, you have 120 meter offset. And then we combine that with a with the wireless recorders that you can see here in order to and, and 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 this time the streamer actually was only moved by hand and we didn't have an overlap the line was 240 or 260 meter and we didn't have an overlap so we decided to use the wirelesses for overlapping regions so where the fault drops we will then take it from the wirelesses but then immediately when we look at the data we got a bit shocked uh, so this is a shot record that was recorded on the streamer. So this portion is streamer data and that portion is the, the wirelesses. I go back to the to the, uh, the slide I had before. As you can see here, the, the wirelesses, they were placed in a larger spacing. So, and I don't remember exactly, I think it was five meter, as you can guess. So if these are two meters, so this would be five meter. Um, and we only had 74 wireless recorders then and uh, recorders were still very pricey then, uh, the, the nodals. So this is a shot record uh, that we record on the streamer data, the vertical components of the streamer data. And, and you can see these are co-located partly with the, with the wirelesses. And this is the wireless records, and this is the land streamer records where the traces are kind of come together and is unsorted. You can immediately see there are some events running here at six, uh, uh, 600 millisecond. And, and and then back then we were not really sure what we were looking. So six, 600 milliseconds is equivalent to uh, 
around a kilometer, 900 meter depth. And this is 45 kilogram of seismic source. So it's actually the drop, uh, drop hammer. And we even at some point used a sledgehammer 5K and we could see the same event at 600 milliseconds. Uh, we decided obviously, um, and, and, and that's actually not the total story. We started first 300 milliseconds. We saw a reflection, we extended the data because we recorded three seconds anyway. Then we, we could see more, more, more and more reflection. And then um, we just, and then, uh, as you can see, this this reflection comes very beautifully, and that's the base of what we know in Denmark. It's the base of a chalk group uh, in in part of Denmark, and it's a very good contrast. We were very encouraged, uh, so we processed the data down to eight eight hundred milliseconds. As you can see, this is the streamer data only, with a blow of only 40, uh, 45 k or or five k of uh, a sledgehammer. Uh, that's a base of uh, the chalk group again. It was very clear this would be top of it, and there's some reflection running. Our target at that time was this boundary, K KT. This is the boundary of distinction, which is very much exposed in, in, in this site. Uh, it's a UNESCO heritage site, I believe, uh, in, 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 uh, in a place called Stan uh, Cliff. So we wanted to see this, we saw deeper. And if, now if you merge the streamer data with nodals, and that's the fold that I was saying. So two segments of a streamer, they were just, we did not move it as we were shooting. We basically moved once the entire streamer. And our idea was to use the viruses uh, to cover the area in between. And once you add the viruses into this, you can get a better continuity of your reflection. So, uh, and it, it shows the point. But what was very impressive for us to see such a beautiful reflection, so deep in the streamer data. Uh, and we had, from 800 meters away, we had access to industry seismic data. And, and that's the quality of a, uh, uh, industry seismic data. Uh, not really from, from uh, this is from 2000 something. And, and, and you can see that's a base of the chalk group again. That's the top of the chalk group. It has a decent quality, but it's not really uh, um, uh, competing with what we had. Um, and that's the source was used much stronger. The, the tipping point for us when we managed to innovate the whole thing for CCS was when we were asked during the, the peak of a corona time to go to the downtown Seoul and try to develop the solution for fault mapping in mega cities. So we were brave enough. We went there two, uh, uh, two years, one, one after another, just in the beginning of the corona 2020 we were there so the noise level dropped so it was a very good time so this time we managed to bring in two vibrators um, and the streamer was dragged behind one of them where we had the acquisition system the data was time back on the on the streamer data essentially the initiation time and we used the time where we initiated the source and we used that and we harvested the data from viruses. You don't see the viruses here, but trust me, there are viruses running around. And we had, back in 2020, we had 300 to 400 nodal uh, receivers. And I think we use only a 20 meter spacing there. So a couple of pictures, uh, uh, we were not permitted to shoot during the day in the city. So we were only uh, able to shoot during the night, but the, the streamer really did a good job. So you will see a couple of examples before I show you uh, uh, the CCS example. So the result of this work is published. So this is a day picture uh, when we went there to check the, the, the nodes to see if they're standing there or they were taken away. And we had a lot of issues where to plant the geophones and, and these big cities. You know, it's not really, sometimes we didn't know we were collect, connecting it to the ground or not. Um, more pictures here. So just showing examples of what happened. So this is from the nodes, two second data. Uh, it hasn't been merged, uh, but what we realize here, what you can see is a two sets of reflectivity. And again, remember the idea was to image full systems. Uh, when you take the nodes, you see these two reflections. And then we said, okay, the streamer data are more suitable to map the bedrock level. So that would be when you merge this, the, the nodes with the streamer data. And now you see the bedrock reflection very clearly seen and where it seems to be this reflection it's hitting the bedrock there seems to be a offset in the bedrock something around 50 meter 
And that was very remarkable for us because then we argue that if there is any fault, that's the topography you can see here, if there is any fault, it's most likely here. And, and these are not really fault plane that we are, we are looking at, but rather the fault plane sits between the, these two sets of reflectivity. So as, for example, with some fantasy would be somewhere here. So now if you extend this, what we were looking uh, 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 with, with the nose and the streamer on the top, you can see a set of reflection down two seconds. This is the hard rock environment would be equivalent to uh, six kilometer four second would be anything around 12 plus kilometer. And, and now remember we have a fault system running here at least our interpretation to be here. And, um, and now if you look a little bit deeper, which we were lucky, now this is a little bit switch. Now we go to four second. A four second, these were the two seconds, uh, uh, these were two sets of reflection you saw. That was a bedrock um, uh, offset you looked at. And if that discontinuity represents full system, these two sets of reflections that we see here, we interpret them to be uh, also fault planes. Let me just go back. So, and luckily at this site, we have access to seismicity data. And this seismicity at this site, it, it's a really very interesting study that the, the two sets of seismicity, they cluster at these two intersections and they are both temporarily, that means time-wise and, and location-wise, they are, uh, they are um, uh, correlated. So a set of ref, uh, seismicity happens here and then switch back to this position. We don't know whether this switch backs or, or, or not, but at least that's how we observe it. So very impressive in a way, though we couldn't see as deep as what we wanted as the first case, but the streamer helped us to at least argue for a fault running there. And because we couldn't image the fault as a fault, uh, you know, as a reflection, we could at least argue that there's a stiff fault. That's why we didn't, we didn't see it. And the rest of it came from the nodes. Now, looking at the, 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 the CCS case here, um, um, back in 20, uh, 20, uh, 20, 21, late 21, we had a discussion with colleagues from GIOS whether we could up get, upgrade uh, the, the acquisition with it in Denmark for CCS application. So we agreed to do a pilot test uh, at Stanlile, where is a uh, where is a natural gas storage site. Uh, it's it's there, so it's lots of knowledge. It's it's accumulated there. But also there was a target whether the, 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 there's a leakage point further to the east at this, at this side. And if this would work, uh, then we would have some upscaling project, which then one after another came up. So we did a pilot test in Stanlile. So you're looking at mainland of Denmark here. So Sweden is here. So I'm sitting somewhere far up north here. So then we did the first upscaling work at Hanso. Uh, and I would tell why the, uh, why these are called upscale is 130. And then after that, this year, gas was, was acquired 250 plus, and then Torning uh, 130. Actually, before Torning, it was a road B, and then Torning. And what you see is colored. These are potential uh, saline aquifers that are domal structures, so they're suitable for CCS. Uh, but obviously, more data uh, are required to... Um, uh, to, to tell whether these are good reservoirs. Uh, what's very important here, the main reservoir in, uh, uh, in Hanso gasum turning is what we call gasum formation. It's, it's, it's a series of sandstone uh, uh, layers uh, up to 30, 50 meter thick. But at road B, uh, gasum comes very shallow. So CO2 would not be as super critical. So it's another formation at, at road B. It's, Bunter sandstone, it, it's a target. So it's another sandstone sitting under. So basically you see it here as a Bunter. So let's look what happened. So, and, and why we did, why the Jewish people wanted to do this? Because at, uh, you know, it, uh, Denmark, especially in, in the North Sea offshore, uh, it's lots of good quality data available, but on mainland of Denmark, uh, most of the data uh, available are from 70s at best some good data were acquired uh, uh, you know like at the Stanlila for the purpose of natural gas storage uh, uh, 3D even but most of these data are very low fold low quality so it's very hard to use these data for uh, uh, you know CCS uh, uh, purpose uh, but again mix so the the realization was made that 
in order to really uh, push for CCS and, and beat for um, uh, site development, the good data are required. So we went on with the same scheme as I showed you. We, we tried in, in downtown Seoul. Uh, the, the system this time was, was branded as size move. So it was trademark as well. And you can see how it works in, in reality. A lot of you know good safety around the, the acquisition. The nodes were positioned on the side, 10 meter apart. And the streamer was dragged. And the source was basically generated at every nodal position and 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 they were moved to the second position usually we use uh, three sweeps 10 240 hertz at one side we use 60 second linear sweep at basically last year at stan Lila, we used 16 second sweeps we tested this obviously and this year surveys gas on touring road B, we increased the sweep length to 18 second so this picture shows a little bit of a setup uh, the, the nodes here are connected to 10 hertz geofronts. I need to make it clear. Uh, and as I, maybe I mentioned, or I didn't mention it, the streamer sensor or MEMS, so the broadband up to 400 hertz, you could say they have very good, good quality signal. And that's actually our target. Um, so a little bit of a sketch how things work in reality. If the line is short and we have enough nodes, um, yeah, uh, we, we also upgraded our nodes as we move on to this year's surveys. Last year, we had 700 nodes. This year, we had 1,500 nodes. So if the line was 7K, we could have a fixed array. So if, assuming this is your fixed array, the vibe came and, and shook at every node position uh, three times, and it moved on, moved on until we acquired the whole, um, uh, the entire fixed spread. And these are some of the you know, information you, you might be interested to look at. And if the line was longer, we had a routine, we had an algorithm, how much uh, nodes need to be picked up and rolled in, in, in front so we can complete the uh, entire acquisition. On average, we, uh, on the nodes, we have a fold of CMP fold of anything from 350 to 400. And the streamer, depending how many segment logistics around here, you can see we have one, two, three, four, five segments. And sometimes we use six segments, uh, that's 240 with a little bit of offset to the source is 250 meter offset. And our idea was to use the nodes as a, for, uh, um, for deeper imaging uh, as it's done conventionally and the streamer for sh uh, a near surface uh, characterization. We have one idea to use the streamer for also refraction statics and pa pass it to the nodes, but we haven't been able to nail this and uh, I think it would be also good topic of a discussion later. So I have a, a, a video for you if, if it's make it to work. Um, um, let me just go to ordinary, not the laser, da, 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 da. maybe this guy. Yeah, so it's a video, it's a time-lapse video. video. I, I'm sorry if the, there's a lag, but it shows you the basic the nodes are shown on the side here. You can see them uh, 10 meter apart is a survey that was done last year. And uh, it's really some places you only need one, two person behind. And if it's really a very curvy, you might need more people to help you uh, move the segments. And we might chop the segments to anything from 20, um, uh, 20 units to 120 units as I mentioned. And sometime if we go to farm, of course, we, 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 we remove the entire streamer so we will not be damaging uh, and the, the farms. There's another video uh, that it's taken from a drone. So you see it now during the day, it's only one person, the road is very, very wide and broad. So it's very easy to drag the streamer. Uh, and if you stay with me a little bit, so it's drone moving ahead. This is a bit of uh, real time, uh, 10 meter apart again. You can see quite a number of segments, good safety. And in Denmark, we were very much leveraged that we could get the whole lane uh, for, for, for the acquisition. Therefore, we were also limited uh, how many uh, shot points we could record per day. So on average, we, we acquired two and a half kilometer. That means 250 shot points a, a day. Uh, um, uh, this was permitted. So as the drone approaches the source, now the tree sweeps are more or less done. And, and soon you see the, the Y would move, um, um, the two vibes would move forward to the next nodes. Um, 
while you're watching, I take a word. Obviously, the weather is not always perfect. So uh, if we had uh, anything from snow, rain, heavy rain, to sunny and perfect day, like 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 this day that you can see here. Yeah, so the source moves and continues until the, the, the spread that we were given for the day was, was required. So let's now look at some data, why, why we think we have innovated uh, this set of for CCS application. We start with Stan Lille, we look at some Hanso data, and I try to uh, uh, give more examples from road B, and I think in the future there would be lots of examples shown from various places. Um, uh, Stanley Lee was a pilot site. So these four lines uh, were acquired first back in February 22. And then in, in, in the fall 22, we acquired, we upscaled the whole thing. So we acquired this set of line, eight lines, what we call hands structures. And we will look at also some data there. So this is a shot record from the pilot work at Stanley Lee. So basically it's a shot record acquired on the nodes. And if you look where the streamer sits here, streamer takes only this portion, that uh, uh, blue region that you can see here. And now if you look at what the streamer says, this is what the streamer says. And, uh, and, and now you can say, well, you're fooling me because everything is squeezed there. And now you, you're showing me a zoom in of the, the streamer. So remember that's just a node. This is a streamer that would be corresponding to that portion. So that's how much nodes are covering. There's a lots of reflectivity running here. If you're very careful, you can actually see reflections running around. The same thing as I showed you at the Stan Cliff where we went for the PhD school. And that was the, 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 um, the sweep test we did. And, and you can see it's a very remarkable number of reflectivities, reflection you see there. Now let's do a little bit of better comparison. So now we zoom in that part. That's what the, the nodes are saying. Uh, it's a bit earlier with this scale, and that's the three mercies. And, and now you can see the point is already given. The, 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 the finer sampling of the streamer is really doing a job here. And it's, uh, it's, it's picking up the reflection very nicely. I would later argue that the broadband, broadbandness of the streamer also contributes to the resolution that I will be uh, showing a bit later. So points taken. So uh, the, the streamer is really giving very near surface reflectivity. And as it goes deeper, um, because the offset is shorter, it's a velocity insensitive rather. So it becomes a little bit difficult to image deeper structures. Um, let's look at the brute stacks from the pilot work. Uh, so Stan Lille again, that's the streamer alone. And that's the wireless is uh, a brute stack process the same way. You can see that the wirelesses are, are seeing deeper structures. So that's a base of the short group again. Uh, very, very good marker. So you will not miss that one. But if you look at the, the near surface reflectivity picked up, so you have better continuity here than, than here. Uh, a little bit of resolution bad here. I don't know why, but I will show more example. Um, uh, so we argue that the streamer is again doing a good job. So the near surface is better picked uh, while the, the, the wireless is a better image, a deeper structure. So if you combine them, then you get a full package. So how we do this in practice. So we, we treat the two data sets separately first uh, in the pre-stack. Uh, we apply their own statics and uh, 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 we process them again separate, separately. We we match their amplitude and phase, and then we merge them. We build one geometry. So you can go here and make a, a you know a section out of each, or you can merge them at the pre-stack when the, both are processed and do maybe a, a final adjustments of reflection statics if it requires continue with the filtering and go on with a with a one pre-stack data for your purpose. Um, Let's show some example again from Stan Lille. This is a wireless, wireless only data process now. So uh, what you're looking here, it's the, it's the base of the salt, uh, uh, Zechstein salt. Uh, that would be the top of it. So this would be the base of it or a pre-Zechstein. That's the chalk group again, the base of it. The target here is gasom, is these two sets of reflection. 
Now, if you look at the streamer only, uh, now it's very clear that the streamer is picking more reflectivity. Let me just go on, uh, especially at that depth. If you merge the two data set, uh, you, you get much more superior data, uh, uh, especially at the uh, uh, near surface from the, the from the streamer. And these are examples that we get uh, from the combined data set. Now, two line from Stanley Le Pilot work. Uh, this would be the the so this is cut. So this is the base of a chalk group. That's our reservoir target. Uh, the top of the gas on base of the gas on, and you can see in this line, uh, we think we are imaging a beautiful fault structure that is not actually penetrating to the surface. And that's a kind of a beauty of data set as such, because if this fault is, is, um, is, is lacking, it's, um, it's permeable, it's not penetrating, it's penetrating all the way to the surface. So it's, it's very nicely imaged here. And, um, and it was really impressive. So we have access to borehole, so we know what we're looking at. Uh, uh, quite a good marker. So this borehole, it's a little bit towards myself here in this screen. So that's why events, they do not match one to one. So, but we know what we're looking at again. So uh, uh, that's the top of gasum, that's the base of a gasum. And I think now I'm correcting myself. So this is the base of a child group. Uh, Thankfully, these data are all open access sooner or later. So the, the data from Stanley is already out. It only costs the administration fee to get them, uh, uh, get the whole data, you know, raw data, process data, field data, you know, stack data, what, what is processed and uh, and all the other data set that have been acquired, it will also be open, uh, I think soon, very, very much soon. So you can get access to this data. You can play whatever you want to do with it, or you can also, if you are, uh, any of you are are here for a CCS purpose, so these data are available, and I think there is a tender uh, out or will be out for CCS development in, in Denmark. And I think in, many industry partners are, um, or interested parties are looking at these data. So we were asked whether we would be upscaling this. Now the pilot work was good and we said, yeah, let's be brave and do it. So we went in Hanso, uh, 110 weeks of data acquisition. We acquired these eight lines um, um, uh, of Pro 530, as I mentioned, plus 130K. Uh, at some point we went also to an island. So I will show you a bit of example where we we were lucky that we got access to OBS as a marine streamer as well here to undershoot from this island to, to mainland and, and look at the transition zone there. So you may question now, uh, uh, so what is it in this for us? Because uh, we are from university anyway, and, and, and what's the science and innovation? And I would say, you know, we went into this project because of uh, the, the, the data that this, this project will provide and, you know, the lifelong data these are unique data, and I think it's very important that these data are collected innovatively. Um, and um, it's open data, open research, um, and it helps to understand the subsurface geology and every site uh, that we've been has very unique geology. And of course, we want to see things, you know, we want to develop solution for uh, uh, this, this new way of acquiring data. And sometimes we, we, we get more complex situation where where it's not any more wireless land and land streamer data, but also we get OBS. So we wanted to challenge yourself with, 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 with such a data set and, and see what is missing. And, um, um, you know, we, we started with, a, uh, with the stand cliff. We went all the way with, uh, with, with Seoul. Now you see CCS. So these are the thing we see firsthand uh, uh, um, problems. And it allows us to look for, uh, what is required in terms of hardware and software, and, and uh, we can push this to to innovation and become a, a frontier in this field. And not forgetting this, this would also help many young professionals uh, uh, to work on and quite a number of publication how to algorithms. Um, uh, also, don't forget we act for climate at that. Let me just go over this. So it's statistics are not so important. Uh, maybe only say uh, at the hand. So um, um, 132 kilometer more or less would be equivalent to 13,200 shots. 
or uh, shot points or nodal arrays, 10 meter space. So this is 30 million traces. And this would then translate to, this is actual data that we acquired. This would translate to about 2 million traces from the streamer. So streamer two meter apart and nodes are 10 meters. And remember, we could not always have as many segments we wanted. If we could do that, we would have got very superior data set actually uh, from the streamer. There's a picture showing at Hanzo, we were lucky. So we did, you know, that's again, the streamer is somewhere there. You may not be able to see it. So this is an island and uh, we were cross shooting or undershooting. The idea was to see if the closure would, would come towards this island. And uh, so we had to undershoot from the island to mainland and we got access to a short marine streamer and 20 OBSs were unfortunately only 10 of them work at that. Um, but anyway, so this helped us. Uh, now you can see the data. So this is was um, this was the idea of where the structure closure would be somewhere. So that's the island we were looking at. So we wanted to see if uh, uh, um, the gas on would would bend down, would close close um, uh, towards this side, towards the north, or towards the island. So let's look how things happen. So it's a work of uh, one of my postdoc and PhDs, and of course many of others involved. Um, so this is only nodes from the longest line. So this is P1 from Stanlile to, to uh, this island. So that's the island data. That's where we undershoot. So this, uh, oh, actually, this is not where we undershoot. This comes very at the edge, and I think that's the, the channel part. And I think we add uh, the, the marine part, you fill up the gap here, and you get a bit of a better continuity. Let me just go back and forth. So that's the nodes alone. That's where you combine both data set. Now you can see the continuity has improved uh, across and surprisingly even here, not at deeper level. Uh, so it's really doing a good job. So that's the reservoir level. So gas on top and bottom, and that's the base of the chalk again. And uh, this would be a top Zechstein. This is P Zechstein and I think salt, it's, it's moving around. Looks like this is a domal structure at Stan Lille. Seems to be there is one more domal structure. We're expecting one also here, if I'm if I'm not wrong. Uh, so in terms of continuity, again, these are all mixed. Uh, great data. Sometimes we need to adjust uh, uh, the 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 misfit due to likely different statics and different data mink. But uh, it it's been done greatly by our colleagues that gives. So it's, it's, it's very remarkable data. It really maps its correlations are uh, great from one line to another. If you haven't been convinced why we need to do the, the you know, why we, the streamer is doing the job, I want to show you some very fresh examples. And that's the data set that I got. Um, so I had to also work some somehow myself. So that's the data that I'm working with together with another post of mine. So these data were acquired in Rodby. This is the most southern line that we mentioned. 10, profile, 10 profiles were acquired this summer. And don't forget sources in all cases are identical. The source generated that every position shot points were recording both nodes and the streamer data. We have access to two boreholes here, but that's not what I'm going to show you. So this is the extent of uh, uh, expand, expected reservoirs for uh, 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 or domal structures where uh, CCS could be stored. And the idea was to look at uh, uh, at this side to look at the continuity in the lateral direction if the full system running, et cetera, et cetera. But let's look what happened. So this is just a brute stack unmigrated. What I show here, it's the same processing applied to both, the same shots recorded in both, both uh, uh, different units, different recorders. So nodes here have more than 400 folds. The streamer, the streamer array has only less than 40 folds. So this is what you get from the nodes. Uh, it's remarkable. The domer structure is very clear. That, I think, is the base of the chalk. And here, our, our reservoir is about one second. So that would be our bunter, bunter sandstone, uh, I would think. And I think this is a gas ohm. Now, I'm, I'm correcting myself. So this would be a gas ohm here. And gas ohm is too shallow. 
So in down here, you have, again, top and pre -Zechstein. You can see it's very nicely done, and, and it's, it's remarkable. So it's brute stack. Let's not interpret. Just look at the quality of the, the data at the brute stack level. Now, I show you immediately the same data and the same line, but this time the streamer. So this is very fresh data that I've been looking recently. So go back and forth. Streamer is really doing amazing job here. Uh, given that the fold is, is, is low, it's really seeing very deep. Not only seeing very deep, it picks up reflections, very, very shallow reflection, and it really opens up your eyes here. And you can see a quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's happening. It hasn't been processed, but, you know, to fully, but to the extent of the, the nodes being both brute stack, it's, it's doing an impressive job. What, when I look at this data, I was immediately shocked. Uh, uh, if you look at this, this is unconformity. Uh, and I, I don't, yeah, so that's a, that's a gas on. So it's basically unconformity. And you may now guess that there are reflections running here. Uh, and I got to know this after seeing the streamer, but the streamer is really seeing it. You can actually see it here. Not only there, you can also see it from this side. If I go back and forth, you no, know, you just had an indication of that in, 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 in the nose. And everything else seems to be really the same. You know, the fractions here, the fractions there are really picked up, but to greater extent in the streamer data. I'm gonna zoom in here and 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 look at the, the you know close up of data set. So this is again the nodes. So the nodes are now you can say, okay, yeah, maybe there are things there, but uh, the same the same processing step shown now. Back and forth. Now you can see the unconformity. The, you can see the top left structures uh, being uh, 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 truncated by this uh, unconformity of gas. On. Let's look at. Um, oh, now you can say, why, why am I getting this difference? If the sources are the same, if I, if I have a higher fold, why am I getting this difference that the streamer is really now? You know, it's giving me very good images, I must say, you know, around one second again here. And I try to look at the amplitude spectrum of this, this section alone, and that's amplitude spectrum you get, of course, whatever processing. So same, the same processing has been applied. That's amplitude spectrum of this section. So geophone 10 hertz. And that's amplitude spectrum of uh, the streamer data. I go back and forth. So you can see, so it's much broader. It's also much more flat response. So I would argue at this moment that the, the streamer being broadband, uh, finer sampling allows to get this resolution that we think in, 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 in some of this um, uh, part of this section. Uh, so this is another line that really uh, uh, got my eyes. So the nodes here, that's the full plotted along this line. So this is a fixer. You can see it's a fixed geometry. So that's why it's low fold in both sides and high enough in the middle. Uh, very beautiful. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a very remarkable uh, what we're seeing at the brute stack level. Uh, something happening here. And I thought this, this is likely a fold system, which I still think it's maybe a fold running. When I look at the streamer data here, it really opened my eyes. So, say, wow, that's a fold of a streamer. You can see what happens. Sometimes we have to chop. Sometimes uh, you know we have to uh, maybe even drop. So at the edges are not much. So this is the highest fold. This is likely multiplied by ten to allow to be plotted against millisecond. But it doesn't matter. So I go back and forth. You see the features are there now. I can see this is more of a depression type reflectivity. And, and and that's likely was um, was captured here, but it's way better seen here in this in this section. So was very happy to see this. So we can look at the zoom in of this part again. So back and forth, it's really a, 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 a doing great job. So reflectivities are more or less the same. We're able to see quite a bit here, uh, in, and after processing, this will be picked up very nicely. So it's really sometimes changes even the, the way you look at the, the section. You might be more skilled than myself, but um, when I saw the images here, you know, it really seems to be a lot of thing running around here that produces. Now I think these are bow tie structure. I thought they were uh, they were uh, because of faulting, and it could be still the bow tie. The, the depression is made there because of faulting, but 
it it it's remarkable the way now you're seeing it here. Uh, so these are brood stack from gas one. I just want to tell you know watch the space. A lot will come from all this uh, data we we have acquired together with Gus, and uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, understanding and learning will come out of this. So trying to finish up with this slide. What's the take home message? Uh, I want to say it's, it's, it's possible to still innovate for land data acquisition, especially for CCS applications. That's, I think, I hope I can convince you that it's, we're getting very good images. Uh, and uh, Uppsala University team has acquired, of course, together with Gus and partners, uh, one of the largest data sets ever collected in mainland Denmark for CCS application. We have benefited quite a bit by having our hands on and the lessons we have learned how to acquire such a data, how to handle such a data. And uh, uh, this helped us, of, of course, to trademark the, the system. And we realized that a new generation of a streamer, a totally different uh, cable free would be required and we managed to file a patent to make sure we would protect this uh, uh, for, for future applications. So, there is a startup company, as I made, as was mentioned before, that also provides services. So, uh, as Thomas Edison said, you know, there's there's always a way, you know, it, it, there's always a way to do better, and and I think, hopefully, this 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 is one way to do better uh, uh, land acquisition for this type of applications. I appreciate your time, so I would be happy now to take questions or uh, any comments, any any. Uh, uh, why is thought on this? Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you. A very interesting uh, webinar and uh, quite a lot of information. Uh, we have uh, several questions. Uh, so let's see. We have maybe one hand up. Uh, maybe we can start with a hand. Yep. Um, Mont, um, we can unmute. Unmute you. And, uh, yes, we can. Yeah, right. okay. I, I have a question related to the source and the records. The source is uh, sort of maybe an up or down sweep. Uh, up sweep. Up sweep, yeah. And it goes from one to about a whole 400, 140 hertz. 10 to 140 hertz. Oh, 240. Oh, that's 10, 10 to 140 hertz. Okay. Um, the, the question I have is you, you will use 3D three component recording, did you use the three components or only the vertical component in your analysis? Very good question. We haven't looked at the other components of a streamer. We have looked at, uh, we have seen very good, on the near surface, we have seen very good shear wave reflections on some of the other components, horizontal components, but we have not looked at them in this context yet. So, but. The, the, the research we have is those two more years. So we're hoping some of the other PhDs will look at the other components. Okay, but we do see the, a share wave reflections. Yeah, right. The nodals, uh, are they also three components? No, um, they, are, they are vertical components. Are vertical components. Yes. Right. Uh, later, I might come up with uh, other questions. So yes. please give others the chance. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we can go to Ben's, uh, Konya. Um, let's unmute uh, Ben's. Please ask him a question. Yes, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. So, uh, you know, all the data, uh, uh, geophone spacing were larger. Am I correct? Yes, 10 meter spacing, yes. And uh, the streamer is two meters? Correct. Yes. So is this the reason that the, <clears throat> the spectra was wider on the on the on the streamer data? We uh, we saw much higher frequencies. That's this. that's a that's a very good question. It could also be that the frequencies are better sampled with a finer spacing. It's a very good point you raise. Yes. Uh, so both bandwidth and the finer spacing allows the higher frequencies to be uh, contained. Yes. I, I I I think if that was your point, I also agree. Yeah, what would be the other reason having higher frequencies? Uh, I said the bandwidth of the 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 MAMs are broader, so you are able actually yeah. to record them. Okay, okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. It's the same source user. Right? You're using both, so it's either the the recording system or um, 
of the way how you record, of course, the fold. Um, the source is the same, the recordings are different, yeah, yes. Exactly. Uh, let me go to, let us go to, thank you, Aliza. Um, let's go for a Q&A box. We have a number of questions there. So the first one is from Ojelve Medrano. How, uh, how has this innovation worked in the case of freshwater seawater interface in areas with uh, seawater intrusions? So it's a bit, uh, so it's in a uh, transition zone. Uh, I'm not sure um, if I get the question correct. Uh, I, I think this should work. It's no no problem. I think the only limitation that could limit you is the logistics. Uh, yeah. So exactly. if you're able to place the, the streamer as the nodes, uh, then I think it would work in anywhere. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's traditional there to, to the data yes. set. Hmm. Uh, thank you. And we have another question from Anonymous attendee. So what if default in the case of on the land streamer could be increased in the middle region? In that case, we might not require consider now nodal. So this is a bit similar to the first to the question from Benz in the sense of yeah. the default, but what do you think? So what has happened and, and earlier on, of course, we were not looking deep. So we kind of, we were ignorant. That's why we had, you know, kind of removed the streamer entirely. But as well as 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 when we became or as we became wiser, then we basically moved the streamer along, so the fold stays more or less uniform, uh, yes. with the exception of the two corners. So the 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 nodes here are not really helping anymore with the CCS case. It's not helping in the middle or anywhere. It's it's only helping to to go deeper imaging. And in uh, in in the earlier mm. case. We had different intentions, so they were helping. But if you can have longer uh, number of segments or more number of segments, and you can just move along, you would not have that problem. No, of course. No, thank you. Um, so we have another question. Did you record and use transverse components? Of course, this was answered before. So we have yes. a single component, a three component. That's uh, good. And then practical question. How did uh, you keep the land streamer on the road where when the road was winding a lot, it was possible to keep the managed winding roads in the full length of streamer. When you take this question, maybe we can also uh, maybe take a look at uh, if you had acquired like a cross spread, if you had cross lines, that would maybe give you more information about the fault planes and the reflectivity. So I take the first one first. So it requires it's a it's a really a gym. So you don't need to have a gym when you are in this kind of field work. So mm -hmm. everyone gets pretty uh, uh, in a good shape. Uh, depends, of course, on the roads. Uh, so we got many practical ways of how to handle the segments. So essentially, we got uh, a bunch of the new generation of a, the, the the streamer has a connection where you can connect a doggy cable and you can drag it. As the vibe comes, as the vibe moves, you basically steer it from behind. So I think to go with 100 in a very you know roundabout, you only need to be four people in a very good, uh, let's say 80K, 90K, let's say 70 kilometer per, per hour road, the bands are very smooth. That's why the road has such a speed. So I, I, there we realize you only need one person at the far end to just watch things will not go wrong. And you can steer it from the tail. So, yes, you you will have some challenges, but uh, it, it's not impossible to to fix this. Back to cross shooting, we do have cross shooting on the, on the nodes, and uh, and sometimes we intentionally collected uh, this cross shooting. I'm not showing it here. And our idea to was to build some sort of a SWOT 3D and and look into the cross tip components of uh, some of the structures. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And I think the next question was about maybe the same from Laszlo Gombar, abrupt line, uh, abrupt line directions, bends in the roads, can result in nice small faults, uh, dipping the layer into the, how could this, could you cope with this? So as you have answered it already, if, yeah. So the, 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 the bending of the roads, it's something that it's giving everyone a headache. Uh, mm. So uh, I think at the shallower, a shallower time, it would be more problematic because of the, the frequency content is higher. So you have shorter wavelength, you might see things that looks like faulty or bending. Uh, so that that would require um, uh, quite a bit of a careful interpretation that the, the bending is it's taken into consideration. 
Mm. Yeah, especially with 2D, you have certain limitations, but of course, when you have several uh, several lines, then maybe you can build some small 3D there. Mm -hmm. um, the next question with James, uh, Mike, uh, the Lancer was 3C, were you able to make use of fuzzing components? Of course, you haven't used them yet. You haven't used them yet, but uh, this would be used as so, a... Let, let me tell you on some, um, uh, we have a few publications on the same streamer, since this has come out um, a few times. We have shown fracture system, uh, converted waves from fracture system on the streamer data, uh, and not on, in this context of uh, CCS, but on uh, some tunnel projects. We have shown uh, a beautiful reflection. Actually, we have two papers published, one in Geophysics, Geophysical Joint International, where we, we use the streamer to look at uh, uh, um, a quick clay landslide in Southern Sweden, where we retrieve 60 meter per second shear wave velocities. Uh, from the uh, from the vertical components of the streamer, not even the the shear, but the shear also shows them. So, uh, yeah. So the streamer was made for that purpose. If you remember, mm -hmm. originally that was the purpose. Yeah, interesting. But how much uh, is the uh, node nodes or the uh, is used for the updated velocity model, right? So you've used it for, uh, for quite a bit because as you. Go deeper. The the two hundred forty meter is really velocity insensitive. So you go to down to one second, the streamer yeah. has no sensitivity to uh, uh, any uh, move out correction. So the wireless comes here to rescue you, uh, yeah. and, and that's where you build up your velocities. Um, is higher uh, from question from Ashraf uh, A. Is higher sam spatial sampling or temporal sampling improved imaging by land streamer in the analysis on this? But I guess you've answered with the, uh, the spatial sampling, but what about the um, temporal sampling? If you looked at, um, yeah. The, the temporal sampling, uh, I don't think it matters here because it's, no. it's, it's 10 to 140 hertz. It's uh, in yeah. uh, uh, spatial sampling, it's, it's the key, I would say. Exactly. So that gives you the fault, gives you the information uh, to to increase signal polarization, uh, gives imaging. Um, and, and, I mean, if I might interrupt, I think another question could have come here where, would have been why why don't you use two meter nodal array spacing? <laughs> and and then uh, maybe uh, somebody was saying then go MEMS and yes, you could do that, but then you 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 your cost will go dramatically up and. Yes, that, that is true. The cost would, would go up with uh, the higher stock of nodes. You could probably yes. do that. But, uh, um, question from uh, Bill Abril. Uh, did you try to compare the node and streamer data at the same sampling interval? If you mean if the yeah, the question is a bit unclear to me. If the, if the question is if the, the phase and amplitude are the same, if this decimated uh, the uh, the streamer to the nodes are they similar because of the characteristics of the, the way I understand the question, Bill, would you like to ask, ask the question yourself? Maybe, but uh, if you had the way I understand the question, if you had uh, decimated the streamer to the nodes, the characteristics difference of the nodes. Oh no, I know. I get now. I get. I get the question now. I get the question. If we would then resample, I don't think we have done this in these studies. But I get the point now. So basically, we would then subsample one one data set against another right. and look what. Uh, it's it's a good point. I think we would do it in future. So and um, and there might be also some learning there because the the nodes are basically looking into more volume of a subsurface, where the 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 streamer is looking at a, it's very narrow as a, um, a narrow uh, you know reflection angle if you look at it, where you might have less sensitivity to anisotropy, things like that in, in, in the streamer data as compared to the nodes. And I think this could be a very good comparison uh, to, to see what, what happens then if we you know, subsample the nodes to the extent of the, the streamer. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, we have several more questions. Uh, very good participation. Day. But let's go to uh, to the um, uh, participants list. We have Yap uh, Mond. You have a question. Another question. Can you raise your hand. Would you like to ask it? 
Yes, the question I have is, I'm running ahead, of course, is how do you see your options for monitoring the difference over time? So that means actually time lapse. Is do you have the same problems as normal time lapse acquisition, or do you say you don't need to have exactly the same source and receiver locations? So just to be clear, at none of these sites, there is currently any CO2 injection. So the, the studies are done for site characterizations uh, to look at the extended risk. So there is no CCS, uh, there is no CO2 injected anywhere for monitoring purposes. And I think this becomes more challenging uh, to make sure, uh, you know, the, the, the streamer is co-located or not co-located. I think I leave it from here that we basically are doing this for site characterization at this stage. And if it's going to be a time lapse, we really have to think about how to do it differently. And maybe there would be a way to innovate there. Because you need to guarantee that they're co-located, you know, the receivers are co-located. And, and on, on this kind of a road, it might be more difficult or might be even simpler. I don't know, really. Uh, it, it, it's a good good thing to look into. Okay. And then if I may, I have another question. I looked at your deeper reflections and it seems, are you sure both have been unmigrated? Because where you had a syncline, it looks completely perfectly migrated. On These the are not migrated. Day. You mean here? Yeah, that's right. It's not migrated. You have proper, you could see this. This but features deep, would. But deeper down, one layer yeah. down, it's perfectly migrated, it seems. It's not migrated. It, okay. it, I would think, it's, look, look, the difference here could be another question. What's happening? Why this guy is flat? This is curved. I can see it already by my eyes. It's most likely curved here. But why is this flat? Why the streamer shows curve? Uh, it's not migrated. Trust no, me. No, and no, I can... no, no. But I look at the deeper reflector. Which deeper reflector? Here in this section? Yeah, yeah. No one, yeah, for that there, that seems perfectly migrated. And if you go one up, it's also perfectly migrated, it seems. There, yeah, but it's one. Lit one. It, it's not migrated. It's okay. hard to, we, we don't migrate parts and leave the rest. So it's not migrated. And okay. I think uh, it's uh, it, the reason it looks what it looks like. It's, uh, it's, um, I would say it's better sample in, in at depth. That's why we don't get the, 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 you know, now you have a higher, you know, larger wavelength most likely here. And that's why maybe you get a more uh, diffractive look uh, at deeper, at, at this level at least. At this level, I think you have a smoothing problem because of large offset, if it's correct, or mm -hmm. you haven't been able to correct for the velocity that is influenced at the near surface for the streamer. Okay. Okay, thank you. Let's but it's not uh, Thank you. Uh, yep. So we go back to the uh, question Q and A box uh, from Eric Archival. Um, just just going back to button. the. Sorry, I mean, if yeah. I do sure. migrate this, this would likely become depression here. Uh, so it's. But I already see that without migrating this. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It looks more, uh, perhaps, as you say, more of this sensitive to the, of the velocity that mm. uh, in streamer data set you don't have that uh, with the short process. But um, our next question: Have your data been used for any ongoing projects regarding CCS? Uh, not these data, as you mentioned, but um, you have any other um, considerations where this method has been used or will be? We, we are discussing whether this should be applied to some Swedish site uh, or some CCS mm. development project in Sweden. We also have discussion to use this for other purposes, uh, deep groundwater exploration, very deep groundwater exploration. But we are open if anyone got any ideas, we are happy to do pilot works first. Yeah, so then in the, that comes the question, I guess, with monitoring as well. So how good is it's repeatable? But again, that is also a practical question of having acquired data on the roads. Um, Andre Pugin, uh, in your last example, it looks like you ran over buried near surface valley with a strong delay, giving uh, the impression that deeper layers are deformed. What, what do you think? Uh, Andre, I, if you want I, mm -hmm. 
I, I, I kind of maybe agree with Andre that is the, there is a depression here, somewhere here or here at this level that it's been pushed down because the velocity hasn't been taken into account. Uh, and and I remember the, the fact that the streamer is shorter offset, so it would be more sensitive to this near near surface effect than than, than the nodes. So it might be the case as as Andre said it. And again, this would maybe a uh, 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 would open up how to combine the two, two data sets, so you would not be really fooled. And one question earlier came, you know decimating the data to the same thing would maybe also open eye, open your eyes uh you know what's happening in the nodes what's happening in the in the streamer and where you get wiser yeah. from yeah when you have different characteristics of the recording record recording systems it's uh, it makes it easier to compare the, the same fold or the same density of the arrays and then uh, you then those are can be matched, right? And then the, this matching then is then transcribed into the other into the model data set, and then you have at least solved for matching part of it. Hmm. Um, we have another question from: um, What is the maximum offset for land uh, date land streamer? And you still see the target more than one kilometer? The maximum um, offset here it's uh, as I mentioned where we use all the segments it, it could be anything from 240 250 meter yeah. uh, that's the offset but i think in this case it depends on your contrast of your reflectivity given that we have a uh, very flat flat reflectivity as you can see here so it's not a big issue uh, so and and we showed the coverage even in some of let me just go back uh, you see here you have a very decent curvature um, you're still picking up things. If this is streamer data, you're still picking up. Uh... Yeah, so you do that. Yes. Hmm. But now, next next question. So, have you attempted surface uh, wave inversion with the land streamer data set? Do you have um, a process? But, very good question. <laughs> I have a postdoc who told me uh, recently that she saw very beautiful surface waves on the, on the transverse component, and we have ideas to remove them from the vertical component, things like that. A, a very good question. It, it, it's pretty rich there, and it could be very useful for near surface characterization. Mm. Correct. Um, and then another question from Tim. Uh, I mean, also the, the streamer sure. samples better the surface waves in a way, given that it's a slow. So it's more favorable for this purpose. Yes, uh, so you have more uh, you have several components there that can uh, you can get uh, get information from. Um, another question from Tim Dusk, which also was on the source side. Um, have you considered trying different source sizes, source source uh, types? Uh, are the source available? Are the source available to push the frequencies towards two fifty hertz? Um, is this viable? Like, Guess that's what you do. What frequency? Two hundred and fifty hertz. Uh, you use them. so so the the source we had could go to four hundred hertz. Um, now let me remember. So when we did the sweep test, you know, um, when we did the sweep test, we we went to two hundred hertz. We couldn't see very significantly different results. Uh, above 140, and most likely because of a near surface effect was really killing uh, at, at, at the first test site and second test site, and we decided to keep going with the same frequencies. Uh, have we tested other sources? No, we wanted to do this, but um, uh, we didn't have time. Have we tested different sources with the streamer? We have done this, and we have many publications on this. So we have tested it with electrical vibes. Uh, we have we have studies. Uh, we have we have shaken the streamer with two to from two to two hundred hertz this time. Electric vibe uh, that was developed within the smart exploration project, and uh, uh, with the shear wave vibrators, thing like that. So. On the context of CCS, we haven't done it. No, and the choice and the choice for the source type that you use here was basically then to, to sample frequencies that are uh, then producing a good image. Yes, and that... also produce good images, the structural images uh, being easy to mobilize. Don't forget, we could have gone for heavier sources as well, but the heavier sources would require more permitting issues and being on a roads. It, it, these are also logistical challenges. 
we would have wished to also use only one one of the vibes instead of two, just to see what mm. would have what we would have got uh, if the point source was even better than two two sources shaking. Uh, but you know, we were kind of limited uh, from our own time, I must say. Go um, mm. for future works. Yeah, scope for, scope for future works. Um, we have a question about the coupling of the streamer uh, on the farm field. Have you developed a way to, how to keep the streamer uh, coupled? Streamer is, has no problem to couple. Uh, if, if we don't drag it in the farmland, so it's it's not really what. But on the dirt roads, gravel road, forest roads, uh, uh, you might argue at some point that the coupling of a streamer is sometimes way better than coupling of a geofence. Uh, and then you can say, how do you plant geofence? Uh, the fact that the streamer sits on a very hard ground, uh, the, the sleds are really good sleds, they're 5K. Uh, they're made so that it would be smoothly moved. They're really like a sled and very smooth uh, uh, surfaces. And they have very good alloy used for their construction. So uh, we have shown comparison one-to-one -one comparison of the same unit, the same sensors uh, planted and, and on, on the sled. So we don't have so much difficulties, though we know that for the other components, it would be a different issue. For the horizontal components, the fact that the, 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 the receiver is more sensitive to the wind, lateral wind, this could be another issue than if you plant. Uh, but we haven't seen, yeah, in the quality talks for itself. So you, I show some example of shots. So, I don't think that's a big issue. We don't go to farms, though. Those are different stories. No, unless you you have proper three D, then you have to, I guess, consider the various. Uh, yes. Various, yeah. Can you comment on the wear and tear experienced by the land streamer and dragging for several kilometers? The more mecha mechanical uh, use of the streamer. Oh, can you repeat the question? And uh, can you comment on the wear and tear, uh, wear and tear of the mechanical stability of the stream land streamer? if it was affected by dragging, if it was affected by mechanical forces. Oh, you you learn quite a bit as you do this thing. So um, um, it, we all guys have come very skilled. They know where things can go wrong. And uh, uh, essentially, um, you know, this th these two years alone, we have acquired a plus 800 kilometer of uh, uh, very high race data. And mm. I think we only got uh, two, three times that the extension cable to the Vive was broken because the, the um, uh, carabiners were not connected to the Vive. It was forgotten. And we have made it so that only uh, uh, this very sensitive parts will, will not break. Only less sensitive part would break. So it, uh, we have learned very far, you know, how, how to make sure that things will not. That's also one reason we segmented it in the mm. beginning. So that if we made very stupid choices in the beginning when we built it, but we learned as we went on. Learn. Uh, we yeah. had we bought one segment which had only twenty in one cable, and we didn't. So we broke one one unit, then we lost the whole segment, and then we said oh, that was a stupid purchase. So we then with with one single cable connection. So if one breaks, then you can just replace one instead of a whole line. So you learn this as you go on. And it's, uh, you know, it's, again, as I should, we, we did acquire this and uh, it, it, we have had no major issues. Did you, did you, um, did you have to have certain weather conditions or was it any, no? Weather would not be a problem in this case at all. Uh, you know, of course, if it's a heavy rain, we stop. I mean, nodes, you, you would not collect data even on the nodes. So it's it's the same concept. Uh, yeah. uh, the comparison of the streamer spectra for um, and the nodes were calculated for the same offset ranges. Uh, uh, the, the spectra that I, I show now is just on the entire section. Uh, we, do, we do show on some other data sets uh, we, we we pick up selected offset and we show the the amplitude space, but this is done for the entire section. So, and 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 I know it may not be uh, totally the right way to do it, but it's one to one section. So uh, whatever it is, two second is two second. Mm. Uh, so it's the same entire section here. There's one question here it comes to why the sections uh, which are used as brute stacks rather than rather than migrated ones. Um, 
is it to, to have a quick comparison? Uh, so was the data still being processed at the time of analysis or because the fear of not getting good sections since it's to be, I guess it's a learning process. You start with the brute stacks. With, with we, 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 I think the, the point is that if the brute stacks are like this, I trust me, the process data would be even better. And we yeah. do have process data of the nodes already. The the the, the streamers are not ready uh, for uh, this data that you're looking at the moment. So, uh, but we will we we will show it. I promise you, we will show it. If the same data, the Brutus stack, it's so different, it would also be different at the at the process uh, um, stage. Yeah. Uh, another question on the, I guess it's the further to enrich your uh, tool of uh, recordings with dust fiber uh, acquisitions. So have you considered to, to include, have, have you considered comparing with dust fiber acquisitions, for example? We, we had some idea whether fiber could be replacing the streamer, but it's, it would not work. And the fiber with all the gauge lengths and the, the smoothing effect, I think it's not going to do the job of dragging the fiber and all the, um, you know, winding back and scattering you get at the curvatures would give you even more trouble. It's so, different. yeah, so comparing it with the surface fiber, that's another story that we haven't done it. But I have worked with, with surface, uh, surface DAS and we're not yet there. Yeah. Unless you trench it properly, and we talk about quite a bit of cost and trenching. Mm. Uh, that's really interesting technology that's uh, coming up uh, more and more in the industry. That's interesting. Um, there's a question on the how about the suppression of multiples on the streamers with given the, the offsets available. But um, also maybe you can say uh, when you just answer this question, you can say some more about the matching between streamer and OVN or uh, streamer, streamer and nodes. Uh, yeah, so we do get question often that whether uh, whether there is some sort of uh, uh, you know induced multiples from just the slats uh, introduced um, on 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 the streamer data, uh, but we haven't really seen this severely. So saying that there are multiples and packlets just due to the geology here uh, that we don't say. I think two sets of decon a uh, gap decon to to remove uh, uh, cyclicity from the from the data set and when we match both nodes and uh, the streamers we do actually see the phase comes very very correctly the phases are the same of course amplitudes and frequency contents are different so we try to adjust that by a, a, a match filter that we apply to the data so uh, the phases are are the same uh, the, the amplitude and, 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 and the frequency content is a bit different, so we run a match filter to fix this. So we haven't seen any any severe multiples uh, in, introduced by by the by the streamer, by the slides of the streamer. There you go. Um, thank you. And then we have another question, we have another set of questions. If the nodes were equipped with uh, or if the nodes are equipped with MEMS, do you think nodal recordings can be enough or more economical? That's um, that's maybe. Less I don't economical. think it would. Have, yeah, I think maybe it would be better, but I don't think it would be. Um, uh, it would replace because you still have to sample it in in a space. So special yeah. sampling would not be correct. And uh, I, Andre is here, and he and I we had a discussion last week uh, that being on a road has an advantage. And that's a ground surface where you have your much of your wave is diving down because mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you have a fast velocity in the surface. So that's a key advantage of where streamer is sitting. And uh, and uh, oh, no. unless you plan your geophones on the roads, then then that's another story. So don't forget there may be something hidden in this too. Uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, I leave it I... there. Yes. What do you think the future holds for using geophysics for the purpose of CCS, i.e. Uh, when uh, it comes to finding new reservoir, reservoirs or evaluating already identified reservoirs? More general question, I guess. But um, Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think yeah. that the technology could also help to find maybe thinner layers. And uh, if not CCS, maybe could be developed for other purposes, geothermal, versus yes. storage. Um, yes, yeah. 
this is a, a this is a tool to to characterize subsurface in that respect to whatever what, what comes to as a as a, as a purpose for that. Um, can we use the streamer for ABA and ABA analysis and the quantum limitation? This you can um, uh, a bit limited on the on offsets, but um, with good understanding of the velocities. That is, um, and if you have a reservoir, maybe you can answer that question. Just to not forget, the purpose wasn't to go at the reservoir level, but was to get a full picture from a near surface to deeper level combined. So it was our idea was never to replace the nodes, was rather to combine them so we get one one set of uh, uh, one image that is complete. Uh, so we never intended to replace one against another, unless your target would be only a near surface, let's say even like a, maybe a half a second, in this case would be okay. Um, uh, I don't know if yep. I answered this question, but uh, our intention was not never to exclude the nodes. No, but this question was about, more about if you, had, if you plan to use, for example, streamer data set for quantitative interpretation, if you had plan, plan to use more in the future, this data set or, or more, or is it um, enough with- Yeah, uh, you could you could use it, You, as I said, you know, if you generate two sets, you can look at them differently. Just make sure you're wiser when you look at the nodes, because you're likely going to look at the nodes as you're more uh, familiar with, but then you would like to be more careful uh, about what you interpret. Or you can generate one image from both data set uh, and then, try to use that for interpretation. And um, another question from Mohammed uh, M. Nasri. Um, data acquired well COVID without noise. What will be the case now in normal conditions? I guess you acquired at night, right? So then- Yeah, yeah. Be, so yeah. Well, when you are in a metropolitan areas, it really doesn't matter if it's a corona time or not. No. I, I guarantee you at midnight, two o'clock in, in a peak of corona, we had thousands of taxis running and uh, they had their own traffic. So uh, I would argue at some point, uh, uh, slow traffic, it's better than fast traffic. Uh, that That's something one, one should look at. Noise. Yeah. The slow traffic will, will 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 induce less noise mm -hmm. than you when you have monsters moving around many of them. So mm -hmm. uh, we have another question. Why did you take different sampling intervals for streamer and nodal? But maybe we can rephrase it. How would if you had done it again, how would you do it? I think we would uh we would do the same because we would not be able to plan two meters basing of nodes. So. Uh, but maybe if if we can try in future some sort of a broadband receivers, yeah. it would be good. Yeah, broadband. Maybe we can reduce it to five meter. You know, we can reduce yeah, it to that's, five meter. That's that's about, that's practical. Yes. Yeah. That perhaps was the actual the, the maybe that was a yes. question from yeah. the. Uh, I think five um, meter you can practically do it. Where were the two D lines process the straight lines uh, where they applied? No, none of them are really totally straight. Uh, no, no. So you have crooknesses uh, uh, along the way, and the, you have to be very skilled how to handle crookness, uh, crook, crook geometries. Mm -hmm. We have some ideas also how to handle, and we have developed solution to look into cross tip effects and things like that from uh, you know midpoint clouds. Uh, so, it's, but given that you have more or less flat reflectivity, is is less of a problem here. It is more or less flattish, as you say, but you have also the static effects in the, in the shallow. But take it into account. True. The, True. The rate. True. Uh, if you, if I correctly, so you said that reservoir must be closed before the survey. May I know the effect of that, of that to the data of your survey? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but um, was it like a, with a permitting? Stuff. Yeah, perhaps. So, yeah. I mean, for every day we were assigned a portion of a, 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 a section of a profile mainly because uh, the, the traffic had to be redirected. So, and this was done a little bit, you know, in, in uh, we took care of this during planning. So the offsets and everything. And it didn't mean actually, it was only a shooting was restricted, not the array. 
So the array could have gone in any any direction, any offset. But the the the, the shots had to be done. Uh, the streamer and the sources had to be within the uh, the cone area where where the permits were given. So in a way, in terms of offsets and 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 the fold, we don't have that kind of a problem. Thank you, Lerza. And uh, our last question in the Q and A box: uh, What maximum depth does the method become useful? And uh, or maybe do you want do you plan to increase the length of the uh, streamer? Yeah, so we have now made another five segments for ourselves. So there, there are cases that uh, maybe not specifically for CCS, but for other purposes, we, we want to have more uh, so we could overcome uh, other problems. So the deepest we have seen with the streamer is in central Sweden. We have seen down to three seconds. We think we're seeing uh, gabroic dikes. They're, they're flat. Uh, sorry, they're not dikes, they're sealed. So... Uh, we call them dollarized sales, dollarized sales, three seconds, that's about 9K. But it's a very Thank favorable you. condition here. Uh, and that's how we, we think. And we know we see them because we also have an industry data set, seismic data set that we can compare. Uh, at this side, I think the deepest we have seen is about two and a half seconds. It's about maybe 3,000 3, 3, meters. Um, mm. So with the current setup. Uh, Great time. So how deep how deep you can see it's also, it's not just a matter of uh, uh, how much offset you have, it's the geometry of the reflection, the contrast, the background noise, uh, you know, these all matter. So if you don't have so much of ambient noise, uh, you, you can actually see sometimes very deep. Uh, mm. and the way, yeah, it's of, yeah. Depends on structure, well, how you, yeah. what the reflection angles will be. Um, is this last streamer that you described available for sale or lease? I get that. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, as I mentioned in my last slide, uh, uh, we have uh, already uh, built one for um, uh, so a, a new, a little bit of upgraded version of this. It's been sold commercially. It's uh, it's also available for, yeah, so it's available via Nordic Geophysics. So we have protection on this. So uh, we are able to sell and we're also building a new one. Uh, that is also uh, a patent pending, so it's 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 available, both for research and commercial work. That's very good. Do you collaborate with other universities on this? Uh... Oh, we collaborate with my <laughs> when you... so it, Korean work was with South Korean uh, Yonsei University, University of Copenhagen, and many Nordic universities. Uh, we work. So the streamer has seen more than fifteen countries. This that this 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 is streamers. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so the question came, you may know the effects of CO2 on the seismic data, yeah, right? So we get got a bit of effects on the on seismic data with amplitudes, of course, uh, the injection of CO2. I mean, what, what are the major significance of this technique on the data? Um, maybe rephrase the question is, what's uh, the purpose, of course, of this work, work is to try to identify, describe the subsurface uh, to with the use with the tools that are optimal tools that maybe that's- I, I, I can see where the question is going. I think it's going again for a reservoir characterization. Yeah. So we, we're we not looking for any ABO responses at this stage. So there is no, um, there, there is no, no target with the exception of Stan Lila. Stan Lila, we have natural gas. So we did try to look into uh, uh, you know, decompose the frequencies and look into if there was a gas shadow there. Uh, but we gave up because the line was a bit away from the main reservoir. So um, uh, it's more at this stage for structural interpretations. Yeah, very good. A fantastic presentation uh, and uh, very good questions and uh, replies and discussions. Thank you very much, Elza. Thank um, you very much. Any uh, thank you, Laurie, and uh, thank you to all who have been on this webinar. Um, and again, this webinar has been organized by SCG's Europe Regional Advisory Committee. Uh, thank you to, to the SCG and uh, to all participants, of course, to the others and all the way, all the best to your future work. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone who attended and uh, asked questions, commented. Have a good uh, day. Thank you very much.